It's also similar to the mark of the beast. that The Antichrist will use during the tribulation period. Revelation chapter 13 says during the tribulation, the Antichrist will force people to receive a mark on their right hand or their forehead in order to participate in the economy, to buy or sell anything. A person who refuses to get the mark uh, will not be allowed to participate in the economy, will not be allowed to buy things or sell things or work. Now, the church will be raptured to heaven before the tribulation begins, so we don't have to really worry about the mark of the beast. But in Hosea's day, in Israel, people were required to kiss the calves, to make a, a public homage to the golden calf. Uh, in 1 Kings chapter 19, if you're taking notes, 1 Kings chapter 19, um, Elijah the prophet has kind of a pity party for himself, and he tells God, I I'm the only one left in all of Israel. Everyone has forsaken you. I'm the only one who's remained faithful to you, Lord. And in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 18, God says to Elijah, I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal and whose mouths have not kissed him. Uh, Elijah, you, you may feel alone. You may feel like you're, you're the only one left, but you're not alone. God says, I have a remnant of 7,000 faithful that have not bowed the knee to Baal and they've not kissed him. Meaning I've, I've got this small remnant that have not publicly declared allegiance to Baal like everyone else has. They haven't given in to public pressure. They've stayed faithful to me. And this is what was happening in Israel in Hosea's day. You had to publicly identify with the golden calf. Verse 3 says, Therefore, they shall be like the morning cloud and like the early dew that passes away, like chaff blown off from a threshing floor and like smoke from a chimney. And notice the word therefore. Again, this is a progression of what happens in the nation. Because the nation of Israel turned from the Lord in his commands, the nation died spiritually. Because the nation was spiritually dead, sin increased more and more in the nation. And eventually, Israel will just vanish away as a nation, like smoke from a chimney. This is the progression that happened in the nation. Now look at verse 4. Yet I am the Lord your God ever since the land of Egypt, and you shall know no God but me, for there is no Savior besides me. When, when God saved them out of the land of Egypt, he reminds them here. He takes them back. When he saved them out of the land of Egypt, you rem remember the story. He took them to Mount Sinai, and there God made a covenant with Israel in Exodus chapter 20. And in that covenant, God said in Exodus chapter 20, he said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. This was the first of the Ten Commandments. This was the first commandment in the covenant. And the, the covenant that takes place at Mount Sinai is very much like a marriage covenant. This is where God enters into this relationship with Israel, this covenant. And the first commandment the first requirement of the relationship is you shall have no other gods before me. And here God reminds them of that back when he brought them out of Egypt and he made this covenant with them. They shall have no other gods before me. And Israel broke the covenant. In Hosea's time, Israel had stopped trusting the Lord. Instead, they were looking to other gods and other nations to save them. And God reminds them there is no savior besides me. <laughs> they're, they're, they're looking to Assyria. They're looking to Egypt. They're trusting in these idols that they've created with their own hands. And God reminds them here. Listen, there is no savior besides me. In Isaiah 43, verse 11, the Lord says, I, even I am the Lord and apart from me, there is no savior. 
I have revealed and saved and proclaimed I and not some foreign God among you. you. You weren't delivered out of Egypt by some foreign God. It was me. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God. Yes, and from ancient days I am he. No one can deliver out of my hand. When I act, who can reverse it? The Lord God has already demonstrated that he's able to save when he saved them out of their slavery in Egypt. And he reminds them there is no other savior. There's no other savior, savior besides me. You know, in the New Testament in Acts chapter four, verse 12, we're told salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Speaking of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only savior. Jesus said, no one comes to the father, but through me. He's the only way. He's the only savior. It's foolish to put your hope and trust in something else other than Jesus to save you because he is the only savior. In verse five, it goes on. The Lord speaking, he says, I knew you in the wilderness and the land of great drought when they had pasture, speaking of Israel, when they had pasture, they were filled. They were filled and their heart was exalted. Therefore, they forgot me. When they were filled, when their heart was exalted. They forgot God. You know, in Deuteronomy chapter six, if you're taking notes, Deuteronomy six, verses 10 to 12, God warned Israel before he even brought them into the promised land, saying, when the Lord your God brings you into the land, he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob to give you a land with it, with large flourishing cities you did not build and houses filled with all kinds of good things you did not provide wells you did not dig and vineyards and olive groves you did not plant then when you eat and are satisfied be careful that you do not forget the lord who brought you out of egypt out of the land of slavery israel's prosperity brought pride and forgetfulness 